Hello there Grade Threes, a very, very warm welcome to you and a welcome from me, Les, to your next maths lesson. Um, I hope you're going to enjoy what we do today. We're doing word problems um, and our theme is a party theme, which is exactly what I feel like. I feel like having a party. Okay, and you know that this lesson is brought to you by Worksheet Cloud. Alright, and if you have a question during the lesson, you know that you can send an email to that um, email address on the screen. Well, as I said before, yes, the theme is party problem solving today. Um, so we're going to learn how to, or carry on learning how to solve problems, and then we're going to actually look at some problems that have got things missing, or information that is missing. So I hope you can enjoy that. And uh, uh, number one, just look at those delicious cakes and ice creams, cherries and strawberries and mm, chocolate icing. So lovely. Just what I feel like right now, don't you? Okay, so let's get on with the question. Sarah was having a birthday party and her mom made three dozen cupcakes for her and her friends. Sarah was so hungry that she ate seven before the party even started. Started, I know, because my children used to do the same. And I bet you guys do too. Hey, you want to sneak one quickly. How many cupcakes were left for the party? So you're going to use the cupcakes down here, just for fun, to plan and then solve your answer. So what do we have to remember, guys? We need to remember to focus on what the question is saying. So it says, how many cupcakes? cupcakes were left over all right but we also have to figure out what do you already know well we know that there are three dozen cupcakes now what does that mean that means three multiplied by 12 because three dozen well one dozen is 12 so three dozen is 36 we also know that she ate seven didn't she she ate seven before the party right so we have to figure out what the question is how am I going to go about solving it? I'm going to say 36 minus 7 is my number statement. That's the method I'm going to use. Now you, I'm going to give you a little bit of time to figure that one out. And then we go on to the next slide. And we'll decide by lifting or looking at four different answers and see which one is the correct one. Okay, so it says here, slide the top of, off of the cupcake to check your answer. Right, so 36 minus 7. What did you get for your answers, grade 3? Did you get 10? Is 10 the answer? Nope. Try again. Is 29 the answer? Absolutely, yes. 3 dozen, which is 36, minus 7 is 29. Not 20, nope, and not 6. Okay, so that was a fun little easy one to start off with. Sara invited all 35 friends in her class to her party. That was very generous. However, Tasha, Sally and Paul couldn't come because of the soccer practice. And Billy and Saul were going out of town. And Ryan, Peter and Jesse were sick that day, sadly. So how many kids came to Sara's party? Let's use our cupcakes again to plan and solve the problem. Well, what do we know? We know 35 friends were invited. But we also know that these guys and these guys and these children couldn't make it. How many couldn't make it? Eight couldn't make it, right? So we know we've got to find the difference. So we have to say 35 minus 8. What is the answer? Let's go to the next slide. I'm going to give you a little bit of time to think about it. All right, so how many people did not come to the party? That was the question. Right. Was it 18? 35 minus 8? No. Was it 22? No. Was it 27? Right. So 35 minus 8 is 27. So only 27 children came to Sarah's party. And if you were writing your answer, you would write a sentence and put your answer in the sentence. So it wasn't 21 either. Right, Sarah's party started at 12 in the afternoon, which is actually 12 midday, isn't it? 12 p.m. They played games for half an hour. They swam for half an hour. Clearly it was in, a, in summer. They ate cake and opened presents for an hour. Then the party was over. The question is, what time did Sarah's party end? Started at 12, so we highlight the information. 
They played games for half an hour. Let's put that in a different color. And they swam for half an hour. And they opened presents and had cake for an hour. So what is the answer? Let's go and plan grade threes down here. So it started at 12. There we go. They, they um, swam for 30 minutes. They played games for 30 minutes. And then they partied for an hour, opened presents. So they were at the party for two hours. So what time, if it started at 12, what time did it end? All right, so let's slide the tops off. What do you think? Did it finish at 2 p.m.? Correct, it finished at 2 p.m. So from 12 till 2 is two hours. 2 a.m. is not correct because that would be 2 in the morning. It would be dark. Everyone would be asleep. 12.30 p.m. means they only had a half an hour of a party, which is no good. And then 2.30 p.m. means it was it was too much time. Only two hours. Sara luckily got a new bike for her birthday. Now she wants to buy some new things to go with it. So she wants to buy a helmet, which would cost 229 Rand. She wants knee pads for 145 Rand and a light for her bike for 248 Rand. How much money does Sara need? So we need to actually get the question first. How much money will Sara need to buy everything she wants? Okay, what do we already know? It's going to cost 229 and 145 and 248. Right, so we're going to plan now. All right, let's go for it. So there is the first one. 200 plus 100 plus 200 is 500. So I'm adding all my hundreds first, guys. I'm adding in my family groups, okay? So my hundreds of members of the family get added first. Then I go to my tens and I go 20 plus 40 plus 40 is 100. Then I add my ones, 9 plus 5 plus 8, which is 22. But then I have got to, I have got to total them all up. Okay. Right, what do you think of the answer? What is your answer? I'll give you a little bit of time to work it out. Or if you need more time, just pause the video, work it out, and then come back and join me when you've worked it out. So let's go down. And we're going to slide the tops of the cupcakes off to check our answers whoops all right so is it 520 nope is it 621 nope is it 722 nope and because you got a sneak preview just now is it 622 yes it is fabulous well done i bet you all got that answer right okay so Sarah shared the leftover birthday cake with her little brother Scotty. They each ate one-eighth of the cake and there was still one-eighth left. What fraction of the cake was eaten? Okay, so we're going to plan our little problem solving episode on our cupcakes again. So what do we already know? We know that Sarah ate an eighth and her little brother Scotty also ate an eighth. So together they ate two eighths. But there was one eighth left over. So how much cake was eaten at the party? If there were three eighths left over after the party, that means eight eighths minus three eighths is what? So if you had eight apples and you ate three apples, how many apples would be left? So how many eighths are left over? Think about it. Or pause the video if you need more time. And remember, you can draw to solve any problem as well. That's always a good idea. Okay, so let's see. What fraction? We said 8 eighths minus 3 eighths. Is it 6 eighths? Nope. Try again. Is it 1 eighth? Nope. 8 eighths minus 3 eighths. Wow, great. It's 5 eighths. What a smart you are. 3 eighths plus 5 eighths equals one whole cake. So there was 5 eighths eaten at the party, not four eighths or six eighths or one eighth. Sara is a very well mannered girl, like all of you. She wrote all of your thank you notes right away. She sent one to each teacher, uh, sorry, one to each family member that gave her a gift. 
She also sent one to each of the 29 friends who came to the party. How many thank you notes did Sarah write? Now, we're not going to solve this problem. We're just going to ask you what information is missing. What is it that you still need to know that you don't, that you, they haven't told you? So she wrote thank you letters. Yes. She said, it said here, guys, to each family member and to the 29 friends. And the question is how many notes did she write? Well, she, we know she wrote 29. And... Plus, she wrote to family members, but what have they not told you, grade 3? There's not enough information here, oh, is there? What did they not tell you? They didn't tell you how many family members gave her a gift. So, you can't solve that problem. You can't get the, the final answer. Okay. Right, so, Scotty and Sarah took a nap after the party. They slept for one hour. Then they watched a two-hour movie with Mom and Dad. The movie started at 6 p.m. What time did the movie end? Right, so what time did the movie end is the question. We know that it started at 6 and we know that they watched for 2 hours. So we know that it would have finished at 8. But it says here, what is the extra information? What is the information here that you do not need to know that they could have left out? Okay, so let's, let's cross Let's cross the left out stuff that we don't need, to, that we can. Right, so it's this one. We don't, doesn't matter if they had a nap. That doesn't even affect the answer. Or that they slept for one hour. So they watched a movie. That's the information. This here is the information that is useful to solve the problem. Not the first two sentences. Okay. So this is now teaching us to, um, teaching us to, find out the most important facts and what is missing and what isn't missing. So Scotty and Sarah took a one hour nap is what is not important in that question. Right now, Sarah's brother Scotty is planning his birthday party. He wants to invite everyone in his class and the 12 boys on his soccer team. How many invitations will Scotty need? What information do you not know? What information is missing? What information has not been told? Okay, so what do we know? We know that he's having a party and he's inviting 12 boys in the soccer team. Sorry, he's, yes, 12 boys on his soccer team and everyone in his class. But what have they not told you? They haven't told you how many students are in his class. So you can't solve that problem, can you? Okay, so the next one. Scotty is going to have a skating party. Well, that's a lot of fun. His friends will meet at the rink, the ice rink, at 12 noon, 12 p.m., 12 midday. They will skate for a while. Then they will spend an hour eating cake and opening presents. What time will the party end? What information is missing, grade 3? Can you tell me? What do we know? We have to find out, firstly, what time the party will end, right? We know that they started at 12. Do you see how important it is to highlight the important information? They will squ skate for a while. And then they will spend an hour eating cake and opening presents. So we only know how much time they spent eating cake, which is one hour, and opening presents. But what do we not know? What have we not been told? And we need to know this in order to solve this problem. Can you tell me? What? information is missing grade threes we don't know how much time they will spend skating nobody told us so we don't know what time the party ended do we all right each of scotty's Scot scotty's mom made goodie bags for 15 children each goodie bag had four pieces of candy and two super balls inside she had two goodie bags left after the party how many children came to the party what is the extra information? So let's find out. Okay, so what do we need to know in order to answer how many children came to the party? Well, we need to know this information. Um, we need to know uh, that she had two goodie bags. She made for 15, okay? She had to make two goodie bags. She made she had two goodie bags left after the party. I'm getting tongue tied. Alright, so that's the important information. What do we not need to know? What is not important? Actually isn't important 
what she put in. Okay? That's not the important thing. So let's see if we write. Let's lift up this, these gorgeous cakes. The goodie bags had four pieces of candy and two Super Bowls. So that, we don't need that information. It's just extra information that does not you help us to solve the problem. We need to find out what is the important information that we need, right? So we just ignore the stuff that we don't need. Okay, girl, girls and boys, I hope that that has given you some um, advice or some help with when you are reading problems in mathematics and how to go about looking at the question carefully, highlighting the question and highlighting the information that you really need to solve the problem and to maybe ignore what isn't necessary and to maybe figure out, well, I can't solve this problem because I haven't been given all the information. All right, so go and use those hints and uh, use what you've learned to solve your problems at school, your word problems. And don't get frightened about word problems. If you highlight things and, and decide what the question is asking and know what you know from the question, the important stuff, then you can solve problems very easily. And guess what? If you don't get the question the first time, read it two, three, or maybe even four times. All right. And often drawing the picture or drawing something in front of you helps your eyes and your brain work together to solve the problem. So that's the end of it, grade threes. Um, other than to say, remember to go and find your worksheet and uh, print it out. Do it, then use the memorandum or the answer sheet to mark your work and see that you got it all right. And if you didn't and you stuck on something, you can go back and watch the video again, okay, to give you some ideas. Right, and so from me, Liz, to you, goodbye, guys. Have a lovely, lovely day going forward, and I'll see you in your next maths lesson. Goodbye.